Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions on education and lifelong learning. Question number one, Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on progress on establishing a commission on winding access as outlined in the programme for government 2014-15. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. President Officer, I am very pleased to advise Parliament that yesterday the Scottish Government announced the appointment of Dame Ruth Silver uh, as the Chair of the Commission on Widening Access. Dame Ruth is a distinguished figure in the world of education with a long track record of support and social inclusion and I am mm. therefore delighted that she has agreed uh, to take on this important role. Uh, other members of the Commission will be announced shortly. Bruce Crawford. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for answer and welcome the announcement. I agree with the First Minister when she said a child born today is one of, in one of our most deprived communities should have no lesser chance of entering higher education than a child born in one of our least deprived. Can the Cabinet Secretary therefore let me know how it is envisaged that the proposed attainment advisors across Scotland, who will be crucial through the delivery of the Government's aims, will be recruited? And what is the planned timescale for their recruitment? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much uh, for that question. Um, Mr Crawford touches on an important point in the programme for government which talks about the entire education system having a role to play in the, the widening access agenda uh, and obviously raising attainment in their schools, raising attainment for all children, uh, but also critically um, closing the attainment gap between the children from the least and most uh, deprived households. The attainment advisors are an important strand of that work. Um, initially, uh, 12 attainment advisors uh, will be recruited, um, but 32 attainment advisors uh, will be in place by the end of uh, the next uh, financial year. Thank you, Liz Smith. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, uh, last night on television, Dame Ruth uh, said that, that uh, it wasn't entirely clear exactly what the full remit of the Commission would be. Could the Cabinet Secretary tell Parliament when that will be known? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I mean, the remit of the Commission will be finalised and agreed at the first meeting. Um, it is proposed that the Commission will uh, synthesise existing evidence around the barriers uh, to widening access. Um, the Commission will propose uh, meaningful and clear milestones to drive further and faster uh, progress. And it will also identify best practice on widening access across schools, colleges and universities and make recommendations about how that is uh, scaled up and progress. And I should have said in my reply to uh, Mr Crawford that the Commission will meet for the first time in April. Uh, there will be an interim report in the autumn and the final report will be April next year. Ian Gray. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Scotland now has the uh, lowest level of grant support for students from poorer families anywhere in Western Europe apart from Iceland where there are no grants uh, at all. Uh, it's hard to imagine that this isn't one of the barriers uh, to widening access, so can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the Commission's remit will allow it to examine that? Cabinet Secretary. It is uh, true that the Commission will look at a wide range of matters. It is important that the final membership of the Commission uh, will draw on a, a broad range of people from uh, backgrounds, whether that's university sector, colleges, schools, trade unions, <coughs> early years, uh, student uh, bodies as well. Um, so the Commission will have to look at a number of factors. What I should say to Mr Gray is that in terms of the minimum income guarantee, uh, which was uh, negotiated and discussed um, with people from the sector, including students, and the priority uh, was to put money into the pockets of students. Um, in terms of the most disadvantaged students who live at home, uh, it is the best package in the UK and in terms of those students that are living away from home, uh, I think I'm correct in saying it's the second or third best package in the UK. Thank you. Question number two, Mike McKenzie. To ask the Scottish Government how the Schools for the Future programme can help improve the school estate and how many pupils it impacts on. Cabinet Secretary. Signing officer, all 32 local authorities will receive funding to improve their school estate through the £1.8 billion Scotland School for the Future programme. The total capital value of the 18 schools opened so far is £239 million. 
The Scottish Government's contribution to that is almost £120 million. Uh, These schools show that the programme's fantastic, new, modern, state-of-the-art learning environments are something which whole communities can benefit from and be proud of for many years to come. Uh, once complete, over 60,000 pupils uh, will benefit from the programme. Mike McKenzie. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Um, the Highlands and Islands has received Schools for the Future funding including for schools in Oban and Lerwick, which are very much welcome. Could the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the number of pupils now in poor or bad buildings has more than halved since 2007? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, President Officer, I can confirm that the number of pupils educated in poor or bad conditioned schools uh, has indeed more than halved since uh, 2007. Uh, the precise figures are that the proportion of pupils educated in such schools has fallen from around 257,000 37% of all pupils in 2007 to around 109,000, 16% uh, of all pupils uh, in 2014. And of course, uh, corresponding with that, the proportion of schools uh, in good or satisfactory condition has increased from 61% to 83%. Thank you. Question number three, Murdo Fraser. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to expand the range of foreign language courses available in schools. Minister Alistair Allen. Uh, as a result of the, this government's ambitious languages policy, schools all around Scotland are developing their languages provision to introduce a much earlier start and strong progression throughout a young person's broad general education. Deciding which languages to offer is a key part of this, and many schools are finding ways to offer a more diverse range of languages than they have previously done. Since 2010, there has been an 8% increase in higher language entries. Roger Fraser. Uh, can I thank the Minister for his response? But he will know that there has been criticism from some quarters, not least the German consulate, about the uh, reduction in uptake of German in schools, with, with the number of pupils taking higher falling by 20% since 2009, and a 50% drop in the number of specialist German teachers. Now, given that Germany is our second largest export market, and we have very large numbers of German tourists, who, along with uh, Americans, are the biggest spenders in coming to Scotland, is he not concerned, as I am, about the impact this will have on our economic potential? Minister. I'm very pleased that the member has taken the opportunity to clarify the views he uh, seemed to express in committee recently, where he described French as, quote, a very minor language. Uh, I certainly, uh, like him, would uh, very much support the teaching of uh, all modern languages in schools, and particularly I've had contact with the German consulate and the cross-party group on Germany about some of the legitimate concerns I think they have uh, to ensure that uh, German remains to, to the fore uh, in uh, our schools. And I think the point is well made about language diversity. Uh, we're trying to increase the number of people in the future who have access to modern languages in schools, but we want that to be a broad range, and that would certainly include German. Christian Allard. Merci, President. Officer, does the Minister agree with me that we should be supporting people to learn as many languages as possible, rather than undermining the teaching of specific languages, as Murdo Fraser did with French at the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee last month? Minister. <clears throat> Well, I, I can certainly sympathise with, with those sentiments. And, uh, uh, of course, I think, uh, uh, I'm sorry to return to this, but I, I do think that Mr Fraser's remarks uh, it must have come as quite a shock to the 200 million or so people across uh, much of Europe and North Africa and many other places uh, who speak French to be told it was a minor language. But uh, all I can say, although I can only just say it, is, pour moi, la langue française est très importante. Question number four, Michael McMahon. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it will increase the number of students from Lanarkshire attending university. Cabinet Secretary. Most recently published data from the Scottish Funding Council shows that participation in higher education increased in both North and South Lanarkshire between 2011 and 12 and 2012 13 by 1 and 3 per cent respectively. Uh, but this government wants to drive up participation in higher education uh, further, particularly amongst more disadvantaged students. Uh, across North and South Lanarkshire, there are eight schools in the Focus West Schools for Higher Education programme. 
Uh, this programme, funded through the Scottish mm. Funding Council, uh, aims to support an increase in pupils from low progression schools uh, entering higher education. Uh, this government's ambition is that every child, uh, whatever their background, should not just have a better chance, uh, but an equal chance at attending university. And as I've said in an answer to an earlier question, uh, widening access to higher education is one mm. of our key priorities. Michael McMahon. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for a response. The Commission on widening the access, which was announced in the programme from Government, is very much welcome, as we have to ensure that every child has the same chance of going to university. But does the, the Cabinet Secretary recognise that while financial support for students is a major factor in addressing the problem, the facilities that students study in is also a significant component of any university's ability to attract and retain students? The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the high dropout rate of students from Lanarkshire. But does she recognise the concerns expressed by many educationalists in my area that the failure of the Scottish Funding Council to support the plan for the University of the West of Scotland for a new Hamilton campus will do nothing to improve the access of poorer students from Lanarkshire to that university? In fact, will make it much more difficult for the UWS to reduce the dropout rate. Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, the non-continuation rate uh, in Scotland is improving. It's decreased from 9% uh, of 06 or 07 entrants uh, to 6.6% uh, in terms of 11 12. I do appreciate that in terms of the University of West of Scotland, it does have the, the highest rate of uh, non-continuation rates, but it is uh, nonetheless um, improving. I know that uh, Mr McMahon, uh, along with other uh, members uh, in Lanarkshire, um, have taken a very keen interest uh, in the University of West of Scotland's uh, proposals and their desire to develop the site uh, in the Hamilton uh, area in particular. And that the Funding Council uh, has said that it's uh, one of its top priorities uh, for its 10-year investment uh, strategy. And the Funding Council um, has said that it will continue to work uh, with the University of the West of Scotland uh, for them to you know, continue to develop the, the robustest uh, business cases possible uh, and indeed you know, to explore alternative uh, sources of funding. Uh, I know the member discussed this uh, in detail uh, with my predecessor and I'm certainly happy to pick up in any conversations with Mr McMahon and also other members uh, who have been expressing concern on this matter also. Margaret Mitchell. Officer, the Open University Young Applica Applicants in School Scheme enables Essex students to study at a higher level education in preparation for university. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware this not only increases the choices of subjects available to the student, but builds their, their confidence and encourages independent learning. In view of this, what action is the Scottish Government taking to safeguard the future funding of the YAS scheme in the academic year 2015-16? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly happy to uh, write to Mrs Mitchell on the, the, the detail of that, but I think it's fair to say that it is important that we have as many routes as possible uh, open to young people to pursue uh, higher education and certainly the courses provided uh, by the Open University have a very valuable place uh, in that spectrum of opportunities that we need to safeguard and protect. Thank you. Question number five, Graham Day. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government how it encourages the study of Scottish literature and drama in schools. Minister Alistair Allen. Curriculum National Guidance encourages teachers to use Scottish literature and drama as a rich part of young people's learning. This can be through whole school events such as theatre productions and poetry competitions and through the books which pupils choose from their school library and study in class. The study of Scottish literature in the senior phase of secondary schools is also encouraged by the inclusion of a specific question on Scottish literature in the new higher and national five English qualifications. Graeme Day. I uh, thank the Minister for the answer. He will be aware of the controversy over the decision of the Rector of Webster's High School in my constituency to stop the play Black Watch from being studied there as part of the higher drama course, because in her judgment, some of the content was inappropriate for 15-year-olds. Can I ask the Minister whether he, he believes it appropriate to leave decisions such as these in the hands of individual senior teachers, when such decisions will inevitably be subjective and potentially expose them to what some might consider unfair criticism? How can we ensure that when it comes to pupils being able to access contemporary material, there's a consistency of approach, at least across local authority areas, thereby not placing staff in the difficult position that this rector has been placed in? Minister. Well, the, the member will, uh, I know, appreciate that there is a long tradition of uh, allowing teachers uh, in schools uh, a decision 
uh, about uh, how they, they teach individual classes uh, and the decisions they make about the text that they use. It's obviously quite legitimate for uh, authors or public figures or, or any of us to express a, a view about any of that, uh, but it should be said quite clearly that uh, ministers clearly don't set the texts uh, that are, are used on a day-to-day -day basis in school. Uh, to pick up on the point the, the member makes, however, uh, anyone obviously uh, who has some reason to complain about any of these matters uh, obviously has a, a recourse to the school or failing that the local authority. Matt Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister will be aware of a recent investigation um, that revealed that an average of 70p per month per head is being spent on books in Scotland schools with a clear postcode lottery across local authority areas. The Scottish novelist Shari Lowe said that these figures represent a misplacement of priorities at the heart of government policy mm -hmm. and the EIS have called on the Scottish Government to invest additional funding. Um, is the Minister um, can the Minister commit himself to addressing this? Minister. Well, the, the member can certainly uh, expect uh, further announcements in the future uh, about uh, our commitments in these areas, but uh, I think it's important to say that uh, the, the government uh, is clearly committed uh, to not just literature but literacy in schools and that the provision uh, of books is something we regard as one of, a, one of our priorities in that area. I certainly see literacy, a love of books, uh, and the provision of books is being closely linked together. Thank you. Question number six, Jackie Bailey. The Scottish Government, what work it is undertaking with educational institutions to tackle occupational segregation. Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, this uh, is a complex and deep-rooted problem, but we are determined to make progress. Action is taking place on a, a number of fronts. Uh, for example, tackling gender imbalance on college courses is a strategic priority for the Scottish Funding Council. To that end, they are working with Skills Development Scotland and key stakeholders on a gender action plan. Uh, this is also a top priority of the Developing the Young Workforce programme, which has targets to increase the minority gender share in the most imbalanced college subject courses uh, and MA frameworks. Um, SDS is also working with educational partners, including schools, on a number of pilots seeking to understand and tackle the, the causes of educational and occupational segregation. Jackie Bailey. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response? In 2008-09, there were 28 female engineering apprentices as compared to 1,312 males. Last year, this had risen to a staggering 68 female engineering apprentices as compared to 1,401 males. So only eight more women a year doesn't suggest that the measures are actually working very effectively. And I'm sure she shares my view that the pace of change is far too slow. So could I ask her, um, based on her last response to me, what target she thinks should be in place and that the government will promote so that we reach a better um, a level of female representation in female engineering apprentices. Cabinet Secretary. I think it's fair to say that uh, progress has not been quick enough uh, in this area um, and that's why as a government we most certainly want to pick up the pace um, and although that uh, full-time equivalence in terms of uh, engineering students uh, has improved, uh, we do nonetheless want to improve the number of young women uh, pursuing those careers uh, and pursuing those careers of course uh, through choice. Um, it is important that we view our education system in its entirety. Uh, we discussed earlier how uh, all of our education system has a role in improving widening access, similarly uh, with uh, gender segregation. So the young workforce uh, work uh, has uh, indicated um, a range of performance indicators. Uh, there are 11 uh, performance indicators with regards to equality. There are indeed stretch targets that uh, underpin that. Uh, some of those targets, uh, the, the aspirations for them to be met by uh, 2020. Um, as I said in my original answer, there is a focus on the most imbalanced courses um, in terms of the ones where there's a 75 25 uh, gender uh, imbalance. And I I think for the first time we're now seeing the Funding Council and the Skills Development Scotland uh, with additional reporting, uh, reporting requirements and monitoring arrangements uh, on this area. And I'm very hopeful um, of the uh, seven early adopter regions as part of the young workforce and there's some very important pilots uh, in this area. Thank you. A brief supplementary and a brief answer. Please, Gordon MacDonald. Thanks, Presiding Officer. 
Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that there should be no such thing as a male or female job and that any perception that such unhealthy boundaries still exist need to be changed? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I do. I would also like to uh, add that it is important that we value the work that women are traditionally uh, attracted to. This is about um, enabling young men and young women to make informed choices about opportunities that best fit uh, with their talents and aspirations. Uh, I'm on record as wanting to see uh, more young men pursue careers um, in childcare. Um, but the issue of occupational segregation um, is... Um, an important one that we need to unpick uh, and unravel because it doesn't just contribute to um, a pay gap but also uh, contributes to the overall career progression uh, of women as well. Thank you. Question number seven, Nanette Mill. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions have taken place between the SQA and the local authorities regarding pupils' career advice and subject choice. Minister Alistair mm -hmm. Allen. The SQA has regular meetings with local authorities in its role as Scotland's national qualifications body. Through this and through engagement with employers, SQA seeks to ensure that all its qualifications help learners to develop uh, skills for learning, life and work. SQA also provides a range of specifically work-related qualifications. However, advice on careers and subject choices is a matter for SDS, local authorities and individual schools. Nanette Mill for that response. Um, the Commission for Developing Scotland's Young Workforce, chaired by Sir Ian Wood, raised the area of subject choice, with areas for improvement including timetabling and subject choice columns, which many participants reported as being barriers to young people choosing subjects that are most relevant to their future career pathways. What discussions have taken place with local authorities regarding this, and will the Minister agree to investigate this particular aspect of career advice and subject choice to make sure our young people are being given the best career opportunities in school? Minister. Well, the, the member raises uh, valuable points uh, about the, the issue of uh, the advice provided uh, to young people, and I think the direction of travel is obviously towards the provision of that advice at a, an earlier age. Uh, and I think the, the broad general education uh, period, first to third year, in secondary schools now provides uh, a much, uh, uh, much more positive environment in which uh, choices can be made. Uh, I believe that uh, it provides a, an opportunity for people to get the depth in subjects that allow them to make uh, choices uh, later on in school that relate to their careers. But I, I think that uh, above all we have to ensure uh, that young people uh, understand the breadth of choices available to them in the world of work. And that's what we do and that's what we provide. Question number eight, Chick Brodie. <clears throat> uh, to ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with the UK Government regarding reintroducing the post-study work visa in Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government is committed to working with the UK Government as recommended in the Smith report to ensure that a post-study work route is put in place to allow talented international students to remain in Scotland after graduation to gain further experience and contribute to our economy and society. Scottish Government and UK Government officials met on the 23rd of January and again on the 13th of March uh, to discuss a potential uh, post-study work route uh, which would allow international students to remain in Scotland uh, for a defined period of time after graduation. Thank you, Chick Brody. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Recent evidence to the Economy Committee suggested that Scotland has a very significant global presence in the software games industry, but that its growth is hampered partly by an inability to retain foreign IT students who qualified here, hampered because of the current visa application regime. On that basis, and having heard what the Cabinet Secretary has said, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the sooner visa management and approval is devolved fully to Scotland, the better? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I do agree with Mr Brodie um, and I agree that the immigration system needs to respond to Scotland's specific needs. Uh, this means supporting economic growth by enabling uh, our industries to attract and retain uh, the best and the brightest global talent and it is time that the UK immigration system uh, delivered this for Scotland. There is cross-sectoral support uh, on the reintroduction of post-study work visas um, and you know, as a country um, our higher education uh, sector and their economy need to be connected to those new and emergency, uh, emerging economies in particular. Thank you. Question number nine. Claudia Beamish has been withdrawn and an explanation has been provided. I therefore call question number ten. Dennis Robertson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government when it last met Aberdeenshire Council to discuss the recruitment and retention of teachers. 
Mr. Dastyr Allen. Presiding officer, myself. Sorry, Cabinet Secretary. Pardon me. The uh, recruitment and retention of teachers, presiding officer, was uh, one of a number of matters uh, discussed when I met representatives from Aberdeenshire Council. Uh, I met them on Monday, the 16th of February, to discuss the commitment to teacher numbers. Uh, specifically, I met with uh, Councillor Isabel Davidson, uh, Maria Walker, the Director of Education, Jim Savage, uh, the Chief Executive Officer uh, of Aberdeenshire Council. And the council wrote to the Deputy First Minister on the 20th of February to confirm that they would maintain teacher numbers. Dennis Robertson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that information. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary is probably aware that in my own constituency in Aberdeenshire West, uh, many of the schools are quite rural. And before there used to be a threat uh, in terms of closing some of the, the smaller schools because of lack of numbers of pupils. Um, Obviously, the thing we want to do is to ensure that we don't have any school closures because of lack of teacher numbers in our rural schools. Um, can the Cabinet Secretary uh, confirm that everything will be done to ensure that we retain our teacher numbers within the rural communities as the schools are the heart of those communities? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, President Officer. I mean, the government is particularly alert to the challenges for uh, rural uh, Scotland. Um, for the last uh, four consecutive years, um, student teacher intake targets for uh, universities has been increased. Uh, Aberdeen University has received a disproportionate increase from the additional uh, places for primary school teachers um, and that took their uh, target intake numbers from uh, 208 um, or up to 208 from 161. Um, we are also funding the University of Aberdeen to work more closely uh, with local authorities to train existing uh, employees such as classroom assistants uh, through a postgraduate diploma in education part-time course uh, on a distance uh, learning basis. Uh, and these are employees who would not otherwise have given up their jobs in order to train as teachers on a full-time basis. Uh, and I know that Aberdeenshire uh, have employees uh, following this route into teaching. Question number 11, Christina McKelvey. Thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when it last met South Lanarkshire Council's Education Department and what issues were discussed. Minister Alistair Allen, I hope. It is indeed. Uh, Education Scotland and South Lanarkshire Council uh, meet regularly to discuss a variety of issues related to education. The last meeting was held on the 23rd of February, where a number of issues were discussed, including inspection activity, activity to raise attainment and professional learning opportunities for senior leaders. Scottish Government officials are due to meet with South Lanarkshire Council on the 14th of April to discuss the monitoring of their commitment to maintain teacher numbers and the pupil-teacher ratio. Christina McKelvey. Um, can I thank the Minister for that answer and commend the Scottish Government in securing the deal with South Lanarkshire Council to maintain teacher numbers and to welcome the forthcoming meeting in April. I wonder if the Minister is aware that in maintaining teacher numbers in South Lanarkshire, the way that the Council got around that was to cut 16 teachers from nurseries and early learning centres, such as the excellent facility at Fernie Gair in my constituency. Primary 1 classes will now rise above 18, and kids with the most pressing learning challenges are being left behind by this Council leadership at a policy level. Can I have now a question, has a terrible please? track record for supporting its youngest and most vulnerable. Will the Minister... Order secure a meeting, which he has done, with the Executive Director, as it seems the Executive Director feels that he shouldn't have to meet with me to discuss this very important issue. Minister. Well, I, I am aware that South Lanarkshire Council have agreed to cut the number of teachers from their early learning and childcare centres. It's for local authorities to take decisions on how best to deploy teachers. Uh, but uh, I do understand the, the concerns uh, that the member raises uh, from a local point of view, and I know that she will not be uh, slow in making those concerns very well known. Question number 12, Gil Patterson. Thanks very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what value it places on early years education. Fiona MacLeod. The Scottish Government places a very high value on early years education and has made early learning and childcare a top priority. We have committed to developing high quality, flexible early learning and childcare, which is affordable and accessible for all families, focusing initially on those who are most in need. Since 2007, we have increased early learning and childcare to 600 hours for three and four year olds, which is more than anywhere else in the UK. 
We have extended this offer and will reach over a quarter of two-year-olds from August 2015. And we have started planning towards our commitment to double the amount of early learning and childcare to 30 hours a week by the end of the next Parliament if we are re-elected to government in 2016. Gil Patterson. Can I thank the, the Minister for that answer? As she will no doubt be aware, Labour-run Western Bartonshire Council decided to cut the school week by two and a half years, eh, two and a half hours for primary one to primary three pupils. And it was only through a massive campaign powered by the, 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 the parents that the decision was actually reversed. Can the Minister outline what discussions she has had with local authorities in Scotland to ensure that no other council will try to implement this devastating cut to our children's education? Minister. Thank you. I have to say to the member that it is for individual local authorities to determine the length and structure of the school day. The statutory requirement is that schools must be open for 190 days. But I would say that best practice would be to consult pupils, parents and the community before making any changes to current structures. Question number 13, Neil Bibby. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what the impact is of severe deprivation on a child's educational attainment. Angela Constance. The impact of severe deprivation on attainment starts early. The Growing Up in Scotland study identified that by the age of five, uh, the gap in vocabulary development is already 13 months and it grows throughout primary and secondary school. In the most deprived 10% uh, areas of Scotland, uh, less than one in three pupils leave school with at least one higher. In the more affluent areas, it's more than four out of five. Uh, until we close the attainment gap and ensure that all of Scotland's children and young people get an equal chance in our schools, uh, education will not fulfil its potential as a societal good. Uh, and that's why last month we launched the Scottish Attainment Challenge, uh, backed up by a £100 million Attainment Scotland Fund, uh, to bring a renewed focus and urgency to tackling this attainment gap, uh, building on the progress uh, that has been made in recent years. Neil Bibby. The Education Secretary has said she wants her to target her attainment fund on council areas with high levels of deprivation. The Education Secretary should be well aware that Renfrewshire has the most deprived community in the whole of Scotland, Fergusley Park. Yet, shockingly, Renfrewshire Council is not going to receive additional funding through the attainment fund. This is completely unjustifiable. Can I ask the Education Secretary why she believes that children from the poorest community in Scotland and other children in Renfrewshire should not benefit from the SNP Government's attainment fund? And will she reconsider her damaging decision? Cabinet Secretary. Sign off, sir. I uh, understand the role and passion that local members have in terms of advocating for uh, their local area. And I am indeed aware that there are deep pockets of deprivation um, in uh, Paisley and, and Renfrewshire, as there is across the Scotland, and Fife would be uh, another area. And perhaps, Mr Bibby, Order, if you please. could let me reply to your question um, with a bit of courtesy that I have afforded to you, you might actually like the answer uh, to my question. Cabinet Secretary, through the chair, and uh, I've asked Mr Bibby pardon, to keep I order. beg your pardon, uh, Presiding Officer, but I take very seriously uh, members raising issues uh, on uh, local areas. And the member is right that we decided that seven councils would benefit in the first instance in the first year from the Scottish Attainment Challenge, Glasgow, Dundee, Inverclyde, Western Barnshire, North Ayrshire, Clackmannanshire and North Lanarkshire, eh, focusing on those areas with the highest concentration of primary school children eh, from deprived households, eh, from those households with the uh, Scottish uh, Index of Multiple Deprivation uh, the, of 20% deciles, one and two. So there was a very clear uh, mythology in terms of how we worked out how to use this resource uh, in the first area. But I am indeed, Mr Bibby, conscious that there are many areas in Scotland with deep pockets um, of deprivation. Uh, and I and this government will continue to work uh, with local authorities to identify and respond uh, to areas of concentrated need. Thank you. Question number 14, Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many non-teaching staff there are in schools and how this compares with 2013-14. Minister Alistair Allen. In September 2014, there were 20,597 non-teaching staff in Scottish local authority schools, compared with 20,923 in September 2013. Mark Griffin. 
I thank the Minister for his reply. I'm sure that he'll recognise that science technicians play a vitally important role in preparing science equipment and lessons in schools across Scotland, and having access to practical science is essential for pupils. Is the Minister then concerned um, about the replies to an FOI I've submitted that shows there has been a steady reduction in science technician numbers, um, close to a 10% reduction since this Government took office? Um, is the Minister committed to reversing this trend and investing in developing essential STEM skills? Minister. Well, I understand the point the member, member makes. I would say that uh, in answer to his, his second point, uh, we are committed, very committed as a government, to investing in STEM. This is, of course, why there are uh, so many new school buildings going up uh, with uh, new uh, science facilities in them. Uh, and it's also why uh, the government recognises the central role of STEM in our curriculum. I am encouraged by the fact that more and more people are taking STEM subjects to hire in Scotland, more people are getting STEM subject uh, hires, uh, and certainly additional staff within the school play a role within that. Uh, there has overall been a 1.6% reduction uh, in non-teaching staff in schools over the period I've mentioned, uh, but I do believe that uh, uh, the Scottish Government is committed uh, very deeply to the science subjects which the member mentions. Question number 15, Angus MacDonald. The Scottish Government, what discussions it's had with Falkirk Council regarding its proposal to reduce the primary school week from 25 to 22.5 hours in 2016-17? Cabinet Secretary. Falkirk Council wrote to the Deputy First Minister on the 19th of February 2015 mm. to confirm their commitment to maintain teacher numbers. Uh, Falkirk Council has confirmed to us mm. its 2016-17 provisional budget proposal to reduce the primary school week from 25 hours to 22 and a half hours from August uh, 2016, uh, delivering a reduction in teacher costs. However, we understand that discussions are ongoing locally uh, regarding the implications of this. As the member will be aware, the statutory responsibility for the provision of education uh, rests with individual local authorities, including the requirement that all schools must be open uh, for 190 days. Angus MacDonald. Secretary, for a reply, um, I'm pleased to tell her that uh, following my submission uh, of this question last week, Falkirk Council quietly announced uh, a U-turn on their ludicrous proposal to reduce primary school hours. Uh, and I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary welcomes this climb down, as do I. Uh, however, will she impress upon all local authorities she meets with that playing local politics with children's attainment and creating anxiety amongst parents who want the best for their children is not a clever tactic, even for the Labour Tory coalition in Falkirk? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I mean, what I can say to Mr Macdonald is that um, while the statutory provision of education does indeed rest with uh, local authorities. Uh, certainly in this instance, I do indeed uh, welcome the change of heart. Uh, I think it is um, imperative that local authorities demonstrate to parents uh, and indeed to the wider community that any changes of this nature have an educational benefit, that their uh, proposals are in the best interest uh, of children. And I have consistently made clear that this government would not support uh, any steps taken by Falkirk Council or indeed other uh, council areas to cut the length of the school week uh, with a view to reducing uh, teacher numbers. Um, this government has uh, made it clear that we are committed to raising attainment uh, and closing the attainment gap. And this is an aspiration uh, which I believe we can all uh, unite behind and I do not believe that reducing teacher numbers is the best way to achieve this. Question number 16, James Kelly. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what support it is providing to college students. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, college students are better supported than ever before. In the current academic year, uh, we are investing a record £104 million in further education student support, uh, with students getting bursaries of up to £93 and three pence per week. Uh, unlike the UK Government, we have also retained the educational maintenance allowance uh, which uh, 35,515 school pupils and college students uh, benefited from in 2012-13. James Kelly. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. There's no doubt that getting young people 
into college uh, ultimately benefits those young people from the education that they receive and has a feed-on effect in terms of the Scottish economy. Therefore, it's unfortunate that that's been undermined by the SNP cuts to college places and also 7 million reduction in student support this year. From that point of view, does the Cabinet Secretary welcome the announcement from Scottish Labour of a policy of supporting higher education bursaries to the tune of 58 million, which will benefit communities and young people throughout Scotland and result in many more skilled people graduating from colleges? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, uh, Mr Kelly's proposals very much depend on there being a Labour government elected um, in May this year. And, of course, we'll, we shall Order, wait and please. see. I mean, I'm not one to make much speculation based uh, on, on the polls, um, but my priority is certainly to keep out um, a Tory government. And it is interesting, given, given, Order, given the, please. We must the Cabinet Secretary. announcement uh, this week, uh, presiding officer, uh, he seems to um, be a little uh, lacklustre uh, on that commitment because we in this party would put aside our party interests in the interests of the country to Order. lock out a Tory government. I would also like Order, to say... please, Cabinet Secretary, can I hurry you along? We're well over time. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. As I say, we're well over time, so I apologise to the members whose questions we did not reach and all of those who wanted to ask supplementaries. But we have to turn to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number 12678 in the name of Patrick Harvey on an end to in-work poverty.